Look how cute you are. You're like a cutie pie. You're a cutie pie. Let's answer some questions. He is the favorite of millions, the kindest actor in Hollywood, a philanthropist, and, of course, the one. Now he's experiencing a new wave of fame and finally looks happy. However, in this video, we'll go back in time, a time when his life turned into a real hell. This is the Biographer Channel, and today we continue to talk about the ups and downs of Keanu Reeves. You'll find out how this actor was able to survive the most difficult tragedies, why he felt blue in that famous photo, and how he found a chance to become happy again. But before we get started, we suggest that you click on the subscribe button and the bell to have your breath taken away and find out the most unexpected facts about your favorite celebrities. Subscribe, and we are starting the countdown. It was 1999. While the whole world was praising Keanu Reeves for his great performance in The Matrix, the actor himself was going through a difficult stage in his life. Back in the early 90s, his sister Kim was diagnosed with leukemia. Since then, Keanu had helped her in the fight against a terrible disease. For some time, he even left his acting career to spend more time with his sister. She always took care of me, and I will always be there for her. Brother and sister had been very close since childhood, and of course, Keanu treasured Kim endlessly. The actor was looking for a new, non-traditional method of treatment. Along the way, he founded his own cancer fund and spent a total of 75% of the earnings from the Matrix trilogy on fighting leukemia and researching the disease. Keanu is a very modest man, so he didn't want anybody to know about it. Once, in 1998, during a break between work and trips to his sister, Keanu met aspiring actress Jennifer Syme at one of the Hollywood parties. As the actor later admitted, it was love at first sight. Jennifer was not one of those girls who immediately rushed into the arms of the first guy they met. Unlike many representatives of the Hollywood party, she behaved with dignity and was dressed more than decently, without deep necklines and transparent fabrics. The natural modesty of the girl instantly captivated Keanu. He began to court Jennifer, and she reciprocated. The relationship between Syme and Reeves developed rapidly. Soon, the lovers began to live together. At the same time, Keanu was filming the sports drama The Replacements, which was based on the 1987 NFL strike. In order for Gene Hackman to play one of the main roles, Keanu reduced his fee by a little more than 10% as he already did for Al Pacino. It wasn't the first time Reeves played a football player. His character in Point Break was also once a quarterback. To look more convincing in the role of an athlete, the actor gained 23 pounds. As a result, during the filming, he was even offered to take part in the game with the Baltimore Ravens. Meanwhile, a year after they met, Jennifer Syme announced to her lover that she was pregnant. The happiness of the actor knew no bounds. Keanu spoiled the bride, bought armfuls of branded gifts for her, gave her a car and a house. He equipped the nursery and bought all the necessary things for his daughter, whom they decided to name Ava. The baby was supposed to be born in January of 2000. It was December 1999. Keanu was in London at that time. Jennifer called Reeves and sobbed so much that the actor could hardly make out anything. He only realized that something had happened to their daughter and urgently flew to Los Angeles. It turned out that the baby died in the womb. This news was a real tragedy for the couple. Jennifer was depressed and had to undergo treatment. To avoid any remindings of his beloved about what had happened, Keanu gave out children's things to those in need. After a while, the couple decided to break up and live through the pain of loss separately. Every struggle in your life eventually turned you into the person you are today. Be grateful for the hard times, they only make you stronger. Keanu took refuge only in the work in which he fully plunged into. The actor starred in several films at once, wandered from continent to continent, and got tired to death. Heavy physical activity made it possible not to think and not to remember everything that had happened. He gave 200% on the set. During this period, the thriller The Gift was released. It was directed by Sam Raimi and was written by Billy Bob Thornton based on his mother's psychic abilities. Keanu Reeves and his on-screen wife, Hilary Swank, visited local domestic violence counselors to understand why men abuse their wives and why wives stay with their husbands. Another film in which Reeves played a negative role was the thriller The Watcher. 
In general, Keanu didn't like the script, and he starred in it only because a friend forged his signature on the contract. In order not to get involved in lengthy litigation, he was forced to agree to participate. The situation was aggravated by the fact that the role of Reeves from the episodic at some point morphed into the main one, although he was still paid the same amount of money. As a result, the film received terrible reviews, and Keanu himself received another Golden Raspberry nomination. However, there wasn't any anti-award that could make him give up on his acting career, because the work was his salvation from heavy thoughts about his daughter. Riding a motorcycle at extreme speed had the same analgesic effect when he raced, overtaking the wind and didn't think about the bad things. On the eve of filming the second and third parts, Reeves had a motorcycle accident. For several days, doctors didn't leave the actor and were seriously fearing for his life. Nevertheless, the movie was filmed. From March 2001 to August 2002, Keanu worked on the sequels to The Matrix, which were filmed at the same time. Jennifer, meanwhile, got a job in a recording studio, began to drink alcohol and take drugs in large quantities. The girl said that it was easier for her to live through this loss and the medicines for depression which the doctors prescribed to her didn't help. This played a cruel joke on her. On April 1st, 2001, after a party hosted by Marilyn Manson, Jennifer Syme got behind the wheel drunk and wasn't wearing a seatbelt. This ride became her last one. The death of a loved one dealt a crushing blow to Keanu. He finally withdrew into himself, for a long time didn't give any comments on this matter and didn't want to be pitied. Reeves buried his beloved next to his daughter and for a long 18 years he didn't dare to start a serious relationship. Grief changes shape but it never ends. People have a misconception that you can deal with it and say, it's gone and I'm better. They're wrong. When the people you love are gone, you're alone. After the accident, the actor shot a social video about the importance of wearing a seatbelt. The actor was sure that if not for this, Jennifer would have remained alive. No matter what, he remained as polite and generous as ever. On the set of The Matrix, Keanu shook hands every morning with all members of the film crew without exception. After the end of filming, he presented all the stuntmen who performed difficult tricks for him with a Harley Davidson motorcycle. Thanks to the incredible success of the first part, the directors were able to afford a budget of $150 million for the second and third parts, which was twice the budget of the last film. However, the producers still had doubts about whether the sequels would be able to recoup the cost of the special effects. Therefore, Keanu decided to forego his share of ticket sales, which was approximately $38 million. For visuals, the Wachowski brothers drew inspiration from a space odyssey, Alien, Vertigo, Apocalypse Now, Koyanakatsi, and 20,000 Leagues Under the Seas. The first Matrix established the bar for action films and brought several iconic visuals to cinema. And of course, the Wachowskis weren't going to stop there. For example, the chase scene was planned for a whole year and filmed for seven weeks. All that was for the final result of 14 minutes. For this scene, the studio hired a group of stuntmen who could beautifully turn the car and not get hurt. Reeves recalled they were completely different from the rest of his stunt doubles. They looked more like harsh cowboys from the 50s. In total, about 200 people participated in the filming of this scene which created the illusion of active movement on the highway. The special effects team turned the giant 23,000 square foot hangar into a motion capture stage for Neo's battle scene with the 100 Smiths. The actors again had to train for four months, and after that, Reeves rehearsed the movements for another three weeks along with 12 stuntmen. In the end, this scene was filmed for 27 days. When the part of the difficult filming was over, another long marathon of 270 days was ahead of the team, and they were getting ready for work. But in the second half of 2001, the film crew had a bad patch. On August 25th, singer Aaliyah, who played the role of Z, died in a plane crash. They were looking for a replacement for nine months after the tragedy. Also, Gloria Foster, who was supposed to play the role of the Oracle, died of diabetes. They say that in order to get rid of the negative influence of the film, Keanu, who professes Buddhism, even turned to the help of a monk who performed the corresponding ceremony right on the set. 
Did it help the film? It's hard to say. The expectations of critics and fans were very high. Everyone involved in the work on the new films stated in interviews that the new movies were just as wonderful as the first one. On one thing, the creators were right. The special effects and Reloaded were really first class. However, the second Matrix disappointed fans. No, we can't call it a failure, but if you compare it with the first Matrix, you will see that the focus has shifted from revealing ideas and characters to entertainment and revealing the world. Though criticism didn't prevent Reloaded from becoming the most successful part of the trilogy at the box office and gathering $742 million, the film was listed in the Guinness Book of Records as the most replicated film. Despite this, viewers believed that Revolutions would return to its philosophical roots and force viewers to sit with their eyes wide open. Unfortunately, the third part was a disappointing conclusion to the trilogy in which the characters and ideas were overshadowed by special effects. There was almost nothing left of the first film. It was just a few main characters in the storyline about liberation from machines. The philosophical foundation laid by the first film disappeared somewhere and it was replaced by a sad but ordinary story of saving the world. Although in the end, Revolutions lost on all accounts to the first two parts, the film crew put no less effort into it. The Wachowskis again meticulously followed all the little things. The team worked day and night on special effects. The Matrix Revolutions earned $427 million at the box office, $300 million less than the second part. Nevertheless, the film received five nominations for the Saturn Award. However, the difficult filming of The Matrix wasn't enough for Keanu. After that, he went on a small tour with his band Dog Star in support of the new album. Together with his bandmates, Keanu also starred in the art house tragic comedy Ellie Parker. Moreover, Keanu didn't take a cent for the work. The Matrix earned millions of dollars at the box office and Keanu Reeves still mourned his beloved woman and unborn child. After the tragedies that happened, he developed a serious depression. According to some rumors, the actor began to abuse alcohol and only his sister Kim was able to influence her brother to quit the addiction. The actor, whose fortune at that time exceeded $350 million, lived in hotel rooms. He didn't just see the point in acquiring his own home. Keanu didn't give interviews and spent most of his time alone. Only by the age of 40, Keanu bought himself a rather modest, by Hollywood standards, house. I've never been obsessed with money. That's not what I became an actor for, and I never liked fame. Although, it's not bad not to worry about bills. It's a cliche that money can't buy happiness. They can buy the freedom to live the life you want. Keanu Reeves Tragedies that could destroy the life of anyone didn't stop Reeves. He continued to go ahead and act in films. In 2001, two films with participation of the actor were released. The first one was the melodrama Sweet November, in which Charlize Theron was again Keanu's partner. The second one was the sports drama Hardball, in which the actor played the coach of the baseball team. Both movies were negatively received by critics, and Keanu again received nominations for the Golden Raspberry. Meanwhile, Kim's struggle with the disease continued. Keanu, from time to time, had to postpone filming in order to be close to his sister. Because of this, rumors about his drug addiction spread in Hollywood. Reeves later said that even in the most difficult moments of his own depression, he came to the ward to his sister and supported her. Together, brother and sister won this battle. Kim finally went into remission. Something better than this news was hard to imagine. Reeves spent another $5 million to rehabilitate his sister. The next film with Keanu was released only in 2003, and fortunately received good reviews. Something's Gotta Give can be safely called one of the best rom-coms. Despite the fact that more serious roles were expected from Keanu, at least he didn't receive another anti-award. In the same year, Dog Star disbanded. But Keanu didn't quit music, and together with former Dog Star member Rob Mailhouse, almost immediately assembled a new band called Becky. After that, Keanu began filming in the fantastic thriller Constantine. The film was based on the comics about Detective John Constantine distributed by DC Comics. Production began back in 1997, but as it often happens, the work dragged on. The director's chair changed owners several times, and Nicolas Cage, who claimed the role of Constantine, turned down the role. 
Only in 2002, Keanu Reeves took his place. The original author, Alan Moore, was extremely dissatisfied with the script and the choice of the actor for the lead role. He copied the image of John Constantine from the singer Sting, and Keanu, of course, didn't look much like him. Frustrated and offended, the writer demanded that the filmmakers didn't mention his name in the credits. It's interesting that the film was originally intended to be called Hellblazer, but then changed its mind as they wanted to avoid comparison with the films of Clive Barker's Hellraiser. Constantine was filled with symbolism and references. For example, for the entire film, John smoked exactly 13 cigarettes, which itself is quite symbolic. Number three is frequently appearing on the license plate of the taxi, which is driven by Constantine's assistant. In biblical numerology, the number symbolizes the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. This is Constantine. John Constantine. In the film, Keanu Reeves' double was again Chad Stahelski, who was already the second Neo in The Matrix. In the future, they worked together again, and that time, Chad tried on the role of director. After filming was completed, Keanu Reeves bought Constantine's sacred weapon and presented it to director Francis Lawrence. Like the author of the comic book, many devoted fans of Constantine turned out to be categorically against Keanu's candidacy. However, despite the mixed reviews, the film eventually got loved by the audience. Now, many believe that John Constantine is one of Reeves' best roles. And what do you think? What are your favorite Keanu roles? Be sure to share your opinion in the comments. During filming, Francis Lawrence and Keanu became so attached to the character that they even discussed what the plot of the sequel could be. Here was one of the options. After the events of the first part, John was on drugs in Morocco, continued to practice magic, and killed people, although he tried not to. Another version was to arrange the apocalypse, which Constantine should have prevented. Unfortunately, the dreams remained unfulfilled, and the character migrated to the series with a new actor in the title role. However, Keanu still gets questions about a possible sequel and always replies that he doesn't mind participating if the old team of the first film takes over it. I'd love to have the chance to play Constantine again. On January 31st, 2005, Keanu Reeves received a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. In the same year, the independent comedy drama film Thumbsucker was released in limited edition. Here, Keanu played one of the central roles. The next film, the melodrama Lake House, reunited Keanu with Sandra Bullock. The actress said that she named her on-screen dog Jack after Reeves' character in Speed, the movie they starred in for the first time. Why do you like that? <laughs> I don't know. I know, don't get me wrong, I mean, it's beautiful and <laughs> no, it kind of... it's terrible. It's terrible. <laughs> Interestingly, the house around which the plot revolved was actually built specifically for the film and then dismantled. But it's not worth regretting that such beauty was demolished. There were no toilets in the house, which would definitely create certain inconveniences for the residents. Critics gave the lake house quite different reviews and called the film too sugary and confusing. In 2006, Richard Linklater's sci-fi thriller A Scanner Darkly was released. It was based on the novel of the same name by Philip K. Dick. We have already said that Keanu was interested in the works of this writer, so the actor could not pass on such a project. Linklater had no interest in turning the book into a big-budget action movie. He wanted to keep the budget under $10 million so he could have more creative control, stay true to the book, and make it into an animated film. For production, a technique called rotoscoping was used. Animators drew each frame over the real one and also added some elements that weren't in real shooting. Hallucinations of the main characters, futuristic costumes, as well as a special perception of reality by the main character. It was not easy to work with such a technique. For comparison, only 23 days were spent on the shooting itself and 18 months were spent on animation. As it often happens to auteur films, A Scanner Darkly didn't do well at the box office, but critics finally became generous with compliments to Keanu. After A Scanner Darkly, the actor disappeared from the cinema screens for two years, but he didn't sit idle. One day, Keanu decided that he would like to have a motorcycle that no one else had. In 2007, he asked renowned California luthier Gard Hollinger to customize his Harley-Davidson. And it turned out that they had one dream for two, 
to rethink the American Cruiser, a motorcycle for long distance travel. For me, it's all about physical sensations, vibration, wind, noise. In addition, this is a great opportunity to be alone with yourself. If I don't race for a long time, I start to break down. After five years of design and testing, only the engine remained from the original motorcycle. Reeves liked the finished product so much that he persuaded Hollinger to start the ARC Motorcycle Company in 2011. In 2008, Keanu briefly returned to science fiction, starring in Scott Deckerson's The Day the Earth Stood Still. The picture was a remake of the classic 1951 tape, as well as the second film based on the story Farewell to the Master. Unfortunately, despite a good box office, the film received negative reviews and was nominated for a Golden Raspberry. Sometimes, I call that the day my career stood still. I kind of went to studio movie jail. The next six years in his acting career were difficult times. Acting either in amateur or simply in unfortunate movies, Keanu began to turn from a cult artist into that actor from The Matrix. Street Kings, Henry's Crime, The Private Lives of Pippa Lee, and Generation Um received mixed or even negative reviews. Failures don't knock me out of the saddle. They make me look stubbornly ahead, clench my teeth through tears and despondency. Do, do, do. Such a cruel way. 2010 was the year of sad Keanu. It was then that the famous meme appeared with the actor sitting on a bench alone. Reeves himself considers this picture quite funny, but it caused a lot of sympathy from most of the users. At some point, the story with the meme reached its climax. Reddit users announced June 15th, the day the photo appeared, unofficial day to cheer up Keanu Reeves. So you're not actually sad and sad Keanu? I was thinking, I had some stuff going on. Sure. I was hungry. Keanu was still alone. From time to time, he was seen in companies of different women, but all the actor's attempts to start a relationship quickly failed. Many fans dreamed of saving sad Keanu from depression. Never in my life did I take advantage of the weakness of the fans. Maybe it's silly not to agree. There are moments when I regret that I didn't walk properly, but I don't know how to take pleasure in actions that seem wrong to me. Keanu redoubled his cautions toward fans after a certain Karen Sala tried to collect alimony from him for four adult children in 2010. According to the woman, the actor used hypnosis to make her think that she was making love not with him, but with her husband. Keanu reacted to the statement quite calmly, agreeing to take a DNA test, which of course turned out to be negative. A couple of months after the appearance of Sad Keanu, the actor went to one of the New York cafes and bought coffee with a cupcake in which he asked to insert a candle. All the tables were occupied, so he sat right next to the entrance. When fans approached him to take pictures, Keanu offered everyone a bite of the cupcake. It was his birthday. Perhaps the actor had no one to celebrate it with, or he simply was not in the mood, but he spent the whole day alone on the parapet with a paper cup and a cupcake. However, gradually, the actor began to emerge from an all-consuming depression. In 2011, Keanu surprised fans by releasing his own book of poems, Ode to Happiness. This was a collection of humorous haiku illustrated by artist Alexandra Grant. The actor met her a couple of years before. They got along well, and once in common company, Keanu quoted a verse that he once wrote for fun. Alexandra was so impressed that she begged the actor for drafts of a few more poems. Soon, she brought him an album with illustrations for his texts. The book was my surprise for Keanu, intended as a personal gift, all our friends in the room giggled when I gave him a copy. They said, please post this. So we got into the publishing business. Alexandra Grant Some saw in the work of the Hollywood actor an imitation of Japanese poetry. Others, the psychedelics of the 80s and a cry from the heart of even doom. While the rest, on the contrary, saw the actor's undisguised banter over all the journalistic cliches that they hung around him in recent years. In the epigraph of his Ode to Happiness, Keanu was not particularly wiser and said, This picture book is for adults who prefer to learn to see colors over dullness. Half sentences, half utterances searching in the past, grappling, groping, never last. In my body, in my heart, and in my mind, but not on my tongue. And so my song remains unsung. 
At the presentation, the actor was in an unusually cheerful mood, joked and entertained the audience, complimented the beaming Alexandra, and even read his poems, which he wasn't going to do at all. In 2013, Keanu starred in a dramatic action movie based on the Japanese historical legend of the 47 Ronin. This is one of the most famous folk tales of Japan, which has now become popular all over the world. Keanu Reeves played Kai, the son of an English sailor and a Japanese woman. This character was not in the original legend. He was invented by the writers specifically for the film. Japanese children grow up with this story. It's told at home and at school. It's part of their culture. It has been adapted into films and television more than once. It's like our westerns, a story that keeps being told. We've redone it in a way, but with more care and respect. According to Keanu Reeves, especially for the sake of the supporting actors, the filming was first held in Japanese and only then in English. For filming, Keanu had to master the basics of traditional Japanese two-handed sword fighting, which he had never held in his hands before. 47 Ronin was originally supposed to be released in November of 2012. Production troubles, which included reshoots and editing, under Universal's supervision repeatedly delayed the film's release. Probably this fact played a cruel joke with the film. The film didn't get a lot of money at the box office and couldn't even recoup its production costs. In the same year, Keanu made his directorial debut with the action movie Man of Tai Chi. Reeves was assisted in the work by Yuan Wu Ping, fight director in the Matrix franchise. The movie failed at the box office, but more importantly, critics praised Reeves' direction and action sequences. The film also received a compliment from director John Woo, who is famous for his spectacular action films. At that time, Reeves' projects had not become hits at the box office for several years, and it began to seem to some that his star was gradually fading. But a year later, those who held this opinion regretted it. It's no secret that Keanu Reeves is a Buddhist and a pacifist. That is why, at one time, he refused to participate in the Oscar-winning film Platoon and a number of other films with excessive cruelty. And yet, he agreed to participate in the action movie where the main character killed about 100 people throughout the film. But he had his reasons. He sure as hell fucked up his dog. <laughs> <laughs> fucked up his dog, that's what you did. You yeah. fucked up his dog. Yeah. All, you, that's crazy shit, man. <laughs> Initially, the producers wanted to take some actor of a more respectable age for the main role in the film John Wick. However, then-producer Basil Iwinick offered to rejuvenate John Wick and take on the main role with somebody whose original coolness would not be questioned, and Keanu was someone he always wanted to work with. For the past five years, the actor devoted most of his time to the man of Tai Chi, but having learned about the project, he immediately agreed and this time he participated in direct work with the authors in order to improve the story. I liked my role, but at the same time, I wanted more. I wanted to influence the entire creative process, the situation as a whole, so that our story could come to life on the screen. David Litch was called to work with the production of the fight scenes as well as Chad Stahelski, whom we already mentioned as Keanu's stuntman. As a result, they became the directors of the project, taking the initiative and presenting a great concept to the producers. Despite his Matrix past, Keanu needed to brush up on his martial arts and weapon handling skills, so for four months, he trained every day for eight hours. As a result, the actor performed 90% of the stunts himself. It's pretty exciting that Reeves learned the entire action sequence for the nightclub fight scene on the same day that the scene was filmed. He's one of the hardest working guys we've ever had to deal with. He is a jack of all trades, knows how to turn on the camera and start shooting, knows how to edit, write scripts, invents roles, directs, and of course, plays great. He's always the first to arrive on set and the last to leave. Chad Stahelski. By the way, it was the fifth movie where Keanu Reeves played a character called John. Can you name all the previous ones in the comments? Let's see how well you know Keanu's filmography. I've played a lot of Johns. John Wick was a real hit. The movie was Keanu Reeves' first big box office success since 2008's The Day the Earth Stood Still. With a budget of $20 million, it grossed $41 million in the US and $23 million in the rest of the world. And Keanu was again nominated for the Golden Raspberry Anti-Award, 
But don't worry, this time in the positive category of award for restoring reputation. Recently, I'm maybe a little closer to being able to break into that world again. I don't know. After the release, Keanu Reeves' popularity skyrocketed again. The actor had to fight off numerous similar roles of men who had nothing to lose. In the same year, the film Knock Knock was released. It was the remake of Death Game, filmed in 1977. Keanu's performance in the thriller was praised by critics, but he didn't save the film from rather mixed reviews. Just a year later, with Ana de Armas, one of the main characters of Knock Knock, Keanu appeared in another film, Exposed. The original story was a surreal drama that focused on child molestation, rape, police brutality, and mental illness. However, the management of Lionsgate Premiere thought that they had sold a police thriller with Keanu Reeves. To increase the film's box office potential, during the editing process, Lionsgate changed the focus of the story to focus on Reeves' character and turn the film into a crime thriller. These attempts to earn more played a cruel joke with the producers and led to a very cold reception. But the participation of Keanu in the film gave the audience the opportunity to once again be convinced of his delightfulness. Despite his superstar status, he continued to act like an ordinary person. On the occasion of the completion of the filming of Exposed, a party was held in the nightclub. The guard standing at the entrance didn't recognize Keanu, who decided to attend the event, he was too simply dressed. In addition, Reeves himself also didn't consider it necessary to introduce himself. He humbly lined up with the other guests, even though it was raining heavily outside. What is your secret for always staying down to earth? Well, I mean, gravity. In 2006, Keanu's collection of unsuccessful thrillers was replenished with the film Whole Truth. Daniel Craig was originally going to play the lead role, but just a few days before the start of filming, he dropped out of the project for unknown reasons and was replaced by Reeves. Well, Craig was lucky because the film received very mixed reviews. In a new way, Keanu opened in the film by Nicholas Reffin, The Neon Demon. The actor played a dubious guy, a depraved manager of a cheap motel in Pasadena. The director met Keanu 10 years ago, and since then he hoped that he would be able to invite the actor to some of his projects. Very few actors have the status of a pop icon like him, and not all have the talent combined with integrity that he has. Nicholas Reffin like Reffin's previous film, Only God Forgives, The Neon Demon received a storm of applause during its premiere at the Cannes Film Festival. At the same time, there were long, active disputes around the film. Someone called it a masterpiece, and someone said that there was not enough depth behind the bright picture of the movie. In any case, the picture was not deprived of attention by any critic. The psychological thriller about the model world was followed by the dystopian thriller The Bad Batch. The film won the Special Jury Prize at the Cannes Film Festival. In the same year, Keanu released a new book, Shadows. The actor made Shadows the main theme of the book, their aesthetics and literary value. Alexander Grant again helped him in the design. On the pages of the book, the authors combined Grant's illustrations with Reeves' poems, in which the actor reflected on the meaning of life. Is the shadow of a metaphor for the dark side of human nature, the unconscious, where our demons are forced out? Is it an allegory or a state of being between darkness and light, life and death? The collaboration between Alexandra and Keanu didn't end there. In the following year, they established a small publishing house in Los Angeles, X Artists Books. It specializes in producing thoughtful, high-quality, artist-focused books. The actor and artist spent a lot of time together, often went out to dinner, but it never occurred to any of the journalists to suspect them of a romantic relationship. For everyone, Alexandra was just a friend, one of the few whom Keanu led into his closed world, and next to whom he smiled more and more often. Meanwhile, John Wick came back to cinemas. The second part earned twice more than its predecessor and received positive reviews. Among other things, Keanu took a special course on shooting techniques from two pistols and in close combat from former special forces to prepare for filming. One of the highlights of the film was the reunion between Keanu Reeves and Lawrence Fishburne, who played together in The Matrix. The story of John Wick was originally conceived as a trilogy, but in 2019, after the premiere of the third film, the creators announced that they were going to make two more films. How will this affect the franchise is not clear. 
we can only wait and hope that the continuation won't disappoint us. Somebody please get this man a gun. The next interesting work of the actor was the small role of a psychiatrist in a film about a girl with anorexia, To the Bone. After that, Keanu once again reunited with his movie wife Winona Ryder in the romantic comedy Destination Wedding. It was already their fourth film together, so it was comfortable and joyful for old friends to work on it. Kurt Dubost described the duet like this. They have a lot of talent and work really hard, but they still have fun no matter what. They rehearsed dialogues, helped each other, made everyone laugh. Throughout the filming, the healing power of love and laughter was felt. Unfortunately, the healing power of love didn't do much for the film, and it received a rather lukewarm reception from critics. Keanu's next two films, Replicas and Siberia, can hardly be called outstanding either. Both of them received low ratings, and Replicas also failed at the box office. Keanu had long been used to bad reviews, so he just kept working. When the actor received an offer from Pixar to voice a character in Toy Story 4, he gladly accepted. It is difficult to imagine someone more suitable for the role of a brave Canadian stuntman on a motorcycle. Duke Kabo, Canada's greatest stuntman! If you suddenly miss Keanu's stories of kindness, then here's another one for you. At the end of March of 2019, a plane flying from San Francisco to Los Angeles made an emergency landing in the city of Bakersfield. The passengers were confused and didn't know what to do next. Luckily, Keanu Reeves was among them. The actor quickly arranged a bus for his fellow travelers and ensured a pleasant ride to their destination. On the way, Reeves entertained the passengers by telling them interesting and remarkable facts about the place where they suddenly found themselves. That same year, Keanu made a cameo appearance in the romantic comedy Always Be My Maybe. In the film, he played a parody version of himself. So where's your man? Oh, there he is! After numerous gloomy roles, it was joyful to see our hero in a comedic way. It's fun to play your heightened self. In that year, a very important event for the actor took place. On November 4th, Keanu appeared on the red carpet of a charity event holding the hand of Alexandra Grant. On that day, they finally announced to the whole world that they were not just friends. According to their acquaintances, the couple had been dating for several years before and appeared together in public, but no one had paid attention to it before. Soon, another piece of good news appeared on the web. It turned out that Reeves made an offer to Alexandra, and they are preparing for the wedding. But it's still being postponed due to the pandemic. We hope that very soon, the saddest actor in Hollywood will finally find happiness because he really deserves it. In life, it's important that there is a person nearby who believes in you, believes in your strength, and you believe in him. It's important to be able to be real, and it's important to have someone nearby for whom you want to become better. Unfortunately, not all fans were happy to see the actors smiling and in love. In the months following the announcement that Keanu was engaged, a woman named Catherine stalked Alexandra and posted her location on various hate chats. The artist had to go to the Supreme Court to get a temporary protection order. Well, everyone has to fight for their love in one way or another. I'm so, not a fighter, I'm a lover. I don't know, no, because if you're a lover, you gotta be a fighter. How so? Because if you don't fight for your love, what kind of love do you have? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> In 2020, Bill and Ted fans finally saw the continuation of the story. Unfortunately, not everyone returned to their old roles. George Carlin, who played Rufus in the first two films, died long before the sequel went into production. However, Kelly, the daughter of Rufus, appeared in the film. Thus, the creators decided to honor the memory of George, because his real daughter is also named Kelly. One day, while filming a movie in the Louisiana area, Keanu noticed a sign on the lawn that read, You're breathtaking. He got out of the car, went to the sign, and put his autograph, and then personally met its creator and her children to thank them for their kind words. Of course, the film didn't compare with the first part, but longtime fans were mostly satisfied. The film holds an 82% approval rating on review aggregator Rotten Tomatoes. The movie became an important event for pop culture and signature guitar riffs, and the naivety of the characters took us back to the distant 90s. 
The big event was the appearance of Reeves at the E3 2019 gaming conference, during which it became known that Keanu would appear in Cyberpunk 2077. He became the prototype of Johnny Silverhand, a character with a mechanical arm, a rock star, a terrorist, and a rather arrogant guy with whom the main character was forced to coexist. The conference gave us one of the brightest memes of recent years. Is really going to be breathtaking. You're breathtaking. <laughs> You're breathtaking. You're all breathtaking. In the same year, Keanu appeared in a very extravagant cameo in the cartoon The SpongeBob Movie, Sponge on the Run. The director of the picture said that already at the stage of writing the script, he imagined only Reeves in the form of a tumbleweed named Sage. That time, he didn't even have negotiations with the actor, and when Keanu was offered to participate, he immediately agreed. Well, Keanu loves experiments, and one of them is the Berserker comic book series, co-written by the actor and published in March of 2021. The plot of the comic was centered on a demigod half-human named B. The story turned out to be quite cruel because the main character agreed to carry out the most dangerous missions of the US government, which in return promised to reveal to B his origin and the way to end his life. Keanu is expected to star in her film adaptation. 2021 saw another major resurrection of the Keanu starring franchise. The fourth part of The Matrix was released. There have been rumors about a sequel since 2011, but the Wachowski sisters have long argued that the story is over and there is no need to return to it. However, everything changed when the sisters' parents died. Grieving over the loss, Lana Wachowski came up with the concept of a new Matrix one sleepless night. According to her, the Wachowskis felt that if she couldn't get her parents back, then at least she could resurrect Neo and Trinity. She decided that she would feel better seeing them alive again. Lily also stated that the film for her was associated with a number of dramatic experiences and emotions that she wouldn't want to go through again. Keanu Reeves, in turn, from the very beginning agreed to participate in the sequel, but only on the condition that the directors and screenwriters were the Wachowskis again. The first parts of The Matrix revolutionized action movies, and Lana, of course, wanted to bring something new to the industry. According to actress Jessica Henwick, the director loves running takes, so will often go 20 minutes without a single cut. Keanu and Carrie Ann decided to remember their youth on the set and jumped off a 46-story building about 20 times for one of the scenes. And by the time you get there, sure. I mean, my heart rate was a little raised, but then after the first time, you, you, can't, you can't think of the possibility, you can't think of the fear. You have to get, you have to block that, you, not block it, but deal with it, absorb it, and then just be there and do. Reeves has stated that jumping off a rooftop is one of the scariest stunts he has ever done. Reaction to the film was mixed. The film was criticized for lacking the skill and originality of the first movies. Keanu himself believes that the continuation of the franchise in the first place is a love story. Not that it needed it, but certainly the depth of why this film got made is the sense of it being a love story between Trinity and Neo. The people of San Francisco were not delighted with the film. The production crew filmed some of the scenes there. In an attempt to portray realistic explosions and fights, they went overboard and accidentally damaged some of the vehicles and storefront signs. In 2021, Keanu was once again recognized as an outstanding actor by the film community. He received his star on Canada's Walk of Fame. So wonderful. What a gift. And to the TTC, I rode a lot of buses and streetcars. You gave me the freedom to travel to get there. Keanu Reeves has come a long way, full of challenges that many people have never faced before. He lost loved ones, his films failed, and he was repeatedly nominated for the Golden Raspberry. But Keanu each time found the strength to continue doing his life's work. We hope that Keanu Reeves will find happiness because he deserves it like nobody else. And if you want to know all the details about one of his best films, The Matrix, click here. Why did this film become cult? How were the famous scenes filmed? And what references did only 7% of viewers notice in it? The answers to all these questions are here. Follow the link and watch. And that's all for today. It was Biographer. We will be grateful for your likes and look forward to seeing you in the new videos. Bye-bye.